Taoism and the underestimated power of softness. Our society values strength and we look up to people who are strong and don't give up. These traits help us face problems head in, create and keep our personalities and control our futures. They help us move forward in a world that often gets in the way of our hopes and dreams. There is something appealing about the idea of a strong giant who doesn't give up no matter what. But have you ever thought about how weak and soft people can be strong in a quiet way that is often missed? That first, this point of view might seem odd. After all, we are often told that being soft means being weak, easily influenced or bullied, and powerless. Still, it isn't quite that simple. In fact, being weak does not mean that you have no power. Instead, it shows that you are open to change and ready to go with the flow. This ability to change may look like a weakness, but it isn't. Lao Tzu, the ancient sage said, the rigid and stiff will be broken. The weak and flexible will win. How soft leadership wins? Imagine a story about a king who only wants the bravest and toughest people to protect him. One day, a wise man goes to the king and tells him there's another way. Instead of showing off his power all the time, the king could create a situation where nobody would even think about fighting him. Since the king is interested, he pays more attention. Even if people are afraid of the king, the wise man says they might still want to hurt him. The best thing would be for everyone to love and respect the king so much that they would never think of hurting him. When the king thinks about it, he starts to see the wisdom in it. People would honor and admire him if he ruled with kindness, honesty, and goodness. They would also want what he wants. His kingdom wouldn't be a place to be afraid of, but a place where people understood and respected each other. On the other hand, a king who rules by scaring his people will only make them want to fight back. People in his country would be scared and angry, and he would have to keep showing more and more power to stay in charge. It's hard to follow this kind of rule, and it can't go on. It often ends in disaster. So, you can see that being soft is a kind of strength. Kindness, understanding, and respect are used instead of force. It makes a place where you don't even have to be strong. Taming the wild. Let's say there was an animal caretaker named Leon who was able to tame wild animals in ways that seemed impossible. Leon was able to get to know his wild charges, such as tigers and wolves, well enough that they were calm enough to walk freely in his courtyard. Leon's secret had nothing to do with being in charge or using force. He didn't try to make the animals mad or force them to do what he wanted. Instead, he showed that he knew what they were like and worked within their limits. He didn't feed them live animals, but instead gave them other kinds of food so they wouldn't get more violent. His success came from how well he could adapt and work with other people. This shows how smart and effective a gentle method can be. It is a plan that is not based on fear, anger, or power but on respect, patience, and knowledge. Think about how the United States runs its prisons, its high incarceration rates and harsh conditions. For prisoners haven't done much to cut down on crime or keep people from doing it again. The use of punishment in these <laughs> cases shows strength 
but it doesn't do a good job of finding out why people do bad things. Compare this to how Finland handles prisons. There, the jails don't have locks or gates, and prisoners can work, study, and even go shopping in the city. Instead of harsh punishments, this method focuses on getting people back into society and helping them get better. Even though some people say this method is too soft, the fact that it has one of the lowest crime rates in the world speaks for itself. Again, we can see that being soft can beat being tough. We can't just deal with the results of crime. We also need to deal with its causes in a nuanced and individualized way. The strength of giving up. Lao Tzu uses water as a metaphor in his famous book, The Tao Te Ching, to show how strong it can be to be soft and compassionate. Water moves and changes when you touch it. It bends in the wind and moves around things that are in its way. It doesn't try to do anything. Though, it is seen as weak in many ways. It lives in the lowest places, not the high, lofty ones we usually connect with power and importance. The society we live in has taught us to value being strong, assertive, and set in our ways. Lao Tzu, on the other hand, wisely said, water is the softest and most yielding material. Still, water is the only thing that can beat it when it comes to breaking through something hard and stiff. So, most people don't realize how important it is to be kind, humble, and open to change. Imagine a room full of people who are all talking about the same thing. Some people, even if they don't know much but are very confident, might take over the talk. Others might say that they understand it a little bit better, which could start a war of words. Yet, the smartest person is often the one who listens, asks questions, and is willing to learn new things. By being soft and humble, this person is able to get past the hard and rigid attitudes of others, which is good for everyone. This is important to how we live every day. Being flexible and able to change our important survival skills that help us get by in a world which is always changing. On the other hand, being too rigid can make it hard to change or adjust to new scenarios. When we're too set in our ways, we risk not fitting in with our environment and cutting ourselves off from change, which is what makes life worth living. The stiff and rigid will be broken, says Lao Tzu. The weak and the flexible will win. So, as we go about our daily lives, we might do well to remember the knowledge of the soft, flexible, yielding, and use it wherever we can. Learning to be open and soft, being firm is often seen as a good thing in our society. It helps us avoid being tricked, bring order to chaos, and stay strong when things aren't clear. When we stand our ground, we are less likely to give in to bad ideas. But there is a fine line between being tough and being too strict. The risk is that in trying to be strong, we might become rigid, unyielding, or even worse, incompatible with a world that changes all the time. When this happens, we risk being cut off from what makes life interesting. On the other hand, being flexible can help us ride the waves of life's constantly changing reality, keeping us in sync with its regular flow. It's interesting that the one that survives isn't always the strongest, but the one that can adapt the best to change. Being able to change is a survival skill that blends toughness and softness. So, 
The people who do best are often the ones who can fit or adapt best to their situations. Survival of the fittest is not about who is the biggest. Instead, it's about being flexible and able to change. To sum up, in the big picture of life, things that are soft and flexible generally win, not things that are hard and rigid. The rigid and stiff will be broken, Lao Tzu said in a very wise way, the weak and the flexible will win. Let's learn to value the power of being soft and flexible and keep an open mind about the world. This is basically the strength of softness that doesn't get enough attention. The softer method gets to the root of the problem instead of just treating the symptoms. This is similar to what Lao Tzu said treat big things as if they were small and long journeys as if they were short.